Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. Canada has killed an immigration program popular with wealthy Chinese who could loan money in exchange for permanent residency. In 2012, all applications to the scheme were frozen, and immigration staff has struggled to clear the backlog. Over 45,000 Chinese who were in line for visas will now have their applications, quote, eliminated and their fees returned. The announcement came less than a week after the South China Morning Post revealed how the scheme was overwhelmed by an influx of applications from China's millionaires at the Canadian consulate in Hong Kong. Canada's finance minister, Jim Flaherty, says for decades the investor scheme significantly undervalued Canadian permanent residents. The minister says the pathway to Canadian citizenship in exchange for a guaranteed loan was much less than required by similar countries. Under the previous scheme, would-be migrants worth a minimum of $1.5 million loaned the government $800,000 Canadian dollars, or about $750,000 U.S. dollars, interest-free for a period of five years. The simplicity and low relative cost of the risk-free program made it the world's most popular wealth migration scheme. A parallel investor migration scheme run by the province of Quebec remains open, although it has been capped at a modest 1,750 applicants per year, with a maximum 1,200 from any one country. Flaherty also announced the scrapping of a smaller economic migration scheme for entrepreneurs. Citizenship and Immigration Canada say that the investor line stood at 65,000 and 70 percent of the backlog as of January last year was Chinese, suggesting about 45,500 from China will have their applications scrapped. The Immigrant Investor Program has brought about 185,000 migrants to Canada and was instrumental in facilitating an exodus of rich Hong Kongers in the wake of the 1989 Tiananmen crackdown and in the run-up to the British handover of control of Hong Kong to Beijing in 1997. More than 30,000 Hong Kongers and 67,000 mainland Chinese immigrated using the scheme. But the government has decided to scrap the program after finding it provided little economic benefit. In his 2014 budget report, Flaherty wrote that there is little evidence that immigrant investors as a class were maintaining ties to Canada or making a positive economic contribution to the country. The action promises to have a vast impact on Vancouver, where 80 percent of Chinese investor migrants seek to live and where average home prices are now some of the most unaffordable in the world. The government said in a statement that the people who use the program paid less in taxes than other economic immigrants and were less likely to remain in Canada for a longer period of time. Now Canada plans to test new programs to seek, quote, new and innovative approaches to business immigration that will better fuel the continued growth of the Canadian economy. A number of other countries offer similar investor programs. The U.S., for example, has a new program that allows foreigners to invest $500,000 in economically depressed areas that create at least 10 jobs in exchange for a green card. European Union member Cyprus is offering residency visas to anyone willing to invest over $400,000 in real estate, and Portugal offers a similar deal for $675,000. For Australia, the price is steeper as foreigners have to come in with at least $4.5 million. The best deal of all may be found in Greece, which has seen many of its young people depart for northern Europe and other locales with better job prospects. There, if you buy property worth at least $338,000, you will receive a five-year residency permit. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network, China's first and only privately owned English language broadcast media. Our full episode can be seen on our website, bon.tv backslash biz dash wire. In just a moment, we'll continue with more insight into the big picture of China's economy.